overlaying telemetry data on your Mavic 3 videos, that coming up right after this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Ryan. This channel, we do a lot of tips, tricks, and reviews, mostly drone and photography related. If that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. It's greatly appreciated. So today we're just gonna be talking about how to use telemetry overlay using the Mavic 3. Uh, what we're gonna do is just for, perform a quick, simple flight. We're going to be recording that entire time, and then I will show you how to combine everything in post. So here we go. So we're already recording, we're going to go ahead and take off. take off. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to do a quick flight back to a um, construction site that's right in our neighborhood. They're expanding our neighborhood. All right, so now that we're done flying, we do need to get our log files off of our mobile device. Uh, the best way to do that is by using an application called AirData. If you do not have AirData installed, um, go ahead and install that. Uh, and then what we need to do is simply just make sure that our logs have synced with AirData. So I'm gonna go ahead now and hit sync now. And we can see all of our flights from today. And yes, the flight that I want is on there. So now that it is synced, we can go ahead and open a web page and go to AirData's website, uh, app.airdata.com, and you can see all of your flights. This is the, in particular the flight that I want to look at. Uh, and we need to go ahead and under the uh, General tab, you should be under Overview, go ahead and download the CSV option here at the bottom. Now the CSV option will go ahead and download it to your computer. Now for the rest of this, we're gonna be using a paid application called uh, Telemetry Overlay. Uh, Telemetry Overlay is a paid application. I think it's around uh, between $100 and $150. It does sometimes go on sale, uh, but it is well worth it. You can also use other free applications out there. Uh, one of the ones that I would recommend are, is Dashware. I did another video on that using the DJI FPV drone, but the means and methods between, say, a Mavic 3 and the DJI FPV drone will be similar in this instance. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into telemetry overlay. So now I've already copied off my video files. I do need to go ahead and load those video files. Um, I'm going to be loading this one. Now it's saying optimizing file. We can go ahead and let that do that. That'll just make the playthrough a little bit faster. This is especially good if you have a slower computer or you can hit this skip button down here at the bottom. Uh, it just, if you don't have good hardware, it just may stutter a little bit. All right, now that that is dropped into telemetry overlay, we can go ahead and now add our telemetry data. You can see it says telemetry could not be found uh, through the video file. Now you can also use the .srt file, the subtitle file, but you're going to have very limited amounts of information that you can overlay on your video. So I really recommend you downloading your flight logs like we just did. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag my telemetry file. This is the one we just downloaded from AirData. Onto that, it's going to go ahead and process it. Now you'll see that it automatically goes ahead and puts some information on the screen, some of these uh, gauges on the screen. You see if you've got sticks, miles per hour, roll, uh, you have your direction and pitch and all the, these sorts of things. You can go ahead and customize these however you wish. In the gauges section, you can add gauges and you can see that they have all kinds of different categories to choose from. Or you can, if you know a specific one you want to look for, you can search for it. Um, but just under aerial, you can see that the ones that are dark are the ones that are already on there. You can add all these other ones. Uh, we have uh, thumbsticks on there now, altitude versus time, all these. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I have done to customize this for my typical videos that you saw in the intro um, by going down here to the pattern section and I'm going to load my custom pattern. I'm going to go ahead and delete all the existing gauges and update all the fonts, etc. Um, so I just need to go ahead and find where I just where I normally save mine and this is the Mavic 3. All right, and there is my layout. Now, one thing that you need to do when you go ahead and drag your telemetry in and your video in, if you didn't start recording the second you started flying, you are going to have to sync the data. So there's this sync telemetry option down here at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and select sync telemetry. So it looks like it's just about two, a two second delay, whoops. Go ahead and change that to two seconds and we'll rewind. That's fairly close. And you can even go into milliseconds if you need to after that. Um, but then, yeah, it looks like everything's coordinated fairly well now. Hey, Ryan from the future here. As I was editing this video, I did realize that I failed to mention that one thing that you do need to do to take full advantage of the log file information is to go ahead and go into the settings of telemetry overlay and make sure you have this read extra streams on. This allows you to be able to add all kinds of other information that isn't readily available normally in telemetry overlay. Uh, things like, uh, go back here, uh, Things like, in this instance, I did um, distance to home that is available in that data stream. Uh, several, several other things like satellite count um, and height above ground level. Things that aren't normally there in the standard gauges. All right, then after you get everything set up the, the way you want it to, um, you can go ahead and then just hit the export button. Export then will allow you to say, do you want to have a finished video MP4 format, which will then kind of bake in all this information right here onto your, um, on, on top of your video. You can also have it do a transparent.mov file. If you do that, it's just going to essentially uh, do the, all the telemetry gauges and maps and those sorts of things. Uh, that way you can then import it into your uh, editor of choice. And I will go ahead and show you how I did that here. All right, so now I have these stacked on top of each other and this is DaVinci Resolve. Uh, my base layer is my video. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these other layers off. All right, so you can now see that I have just my recorded video from the drone. And then this layer is my overlaid MOV, transparent MOV file. And I will hide my video track so you can see just what that looks like. And then lastly, I did a screen recording on the screen of my controller with the actual video so I could put it on here. So now I do know that this shows the RC Pro on here. Uh, I initially was planning on doing this kind of intro with the RC Pro, and I did notice that for some reason, uh, when using the RC Pro by itself, it does not record stick inputs. Uh, so I went ahead and I reshot the, the entire flight sequence using a standard remote controller and uh, an Android phone. I used a Pixel 6 Pro and it did record the stick movement movements at that time. I went back and forth between several drones in several instances and I did realize that it was the RC Pro that was not doing the recording of the stick inputs. So just keep that in mind if you do have, uh, if you're running into the issue where your stick movements are not recording on your RC Pro, that's why. And finally, we can go ahead and export this video uh, to its final state and uh, upload it wherever you might want to upload it, just like you would normally do. So now that we've got everything done and compiled, here is what the final result looks like.
So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. Film safe, fly safe, and bye for now.